preaching that tonight, but, but uh, that's another message. And I want to preach today on waters rising. Everybody say, water is rising. Amen. Psalm 47, 1. Then he brought me back to the door of the temple, and there the water was flowing from under the threshold of the temple toward the east from the front of the temple faced east. And the water was flowing from under the right side of the temple south of the altar. And he brought me out by the way of the north gate and led me around to the outside gateway that faces east. And there was water running out on the right side. When the man went to the east with the line in his hand, he measured 1,000 cubits and he brought me through the waters. The water came to my ankles. Again, he measured 1,000 and brought me through the waters. The water came to my knees. Again, he measured 1,000 and brought me through the water and it came to my waist. Again, he measured 1,000. It was a river that I could not cross for the water was too deep. Water in which one must swim. A river that could not be crossed. Father, thank you today for your Holy Spirit. Touch us in a powerful way. And all the saints said, Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Waters rising is the thought today the Holy Spirit gave me. And this is a prophetic word which will be fulfilled literally during the millennial reign of Jesus. But it's also fulfilled spiritually and figuratively to the church in Bellflower today. Isn't it amazing that the Bible has literal interpretations, spiritual interpretations, and uh, chronologic you know, interpretations. But as we look at this today, we see that the water, first of all, represents the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. It represents the very Spirit of God as we look at its meaning, and it flows from under the throne of God. Can there be any source that would be more holy, more pure, more powerful than water that flows directly from the throne of God? It flows out from under the throne in Jerusalem towards the east and under the threshold of the temple and it's holy and pure and it's from God himself. I just want all of you to know that that river is flowing in this church that every time you come in, there's water here. There is a river that is flowing. Can I hear an amen? There is a river that is flowing. And that river is the Holy Spirit. We're not special. We're just people that understand that God honors prayer and that God honors petition and that when we call on the name of the Lord, He comes with His presence. His Holy Spirit flows out from the very throne of God. What you have felt this morning, what you have experienced, what has touched your heart and soul and even your body has not been man-made, emotion-made, or church-made. It is God-made. I want you to understand the Holy Spirit Spirit comes from God. It comes from the very throne of God. It is God Himself. And today, the harlot church denigrates the Holy Spirit and makes light of it. But I want you to understand that the Holy Spirit is pure. He's holy. He's clean. And He is God Himself. He will change your life. He will change your source. He will change your eternity if you let Him touch you. So we thank Thank God for the Holy Spirit that is among us today. And we know that He crafts and creates within us the Spirit of God so that we can be vessels of honor. Nothing but the Holy Spirit will make people holy. Men have spiritually tried to pull themselves up by their bootstraps. How many of us have already made a New Year's resolution and already fallen off the wagon? Here it is 20 days into the New Year and some of you already have abandoned your weight loss program. You have already you know started hanging clothes on the treadmill and using it for something it's not intended to use for. You've already put up those uh, diet cookies and got out the Oreos. <laughs> You've already abandoned. How many times does man try to change himself and the Holy Spirit says on the deeper issues of our life, the spiritual issues nothing. Not a leopard can change his spot. He a leopard has has a better chance of changing his spots than a man does of changing himself without the Spirit of God. It takes the Holy Spirit of God working in us. But when the Holy Spirit comes, He can change you 180 degrees. He can take you from cursing to blessing.
anything. He can take you from a vile mind to a pure mind. He can take you out of pornography and put you in the King James Version. He can take you out of the pool hall and the disco and put you in church three days a week. He can take you out of filthy material and put you in the Word of Almighty God. He can change a person from the skin in and from the heart out. For the river that flows from the throne is holy and it's pure and it's powerful and it can change you today. Hallelujah. The church is full of dysfunctional adults that are full of sin and have renamed their sins and they don't deal with what Jesus came to give us which was life and victory over the power of sin. Jesus had a look in his eye, a steely look that said, I have come to destroy the works of the devil. I have come to undo his kingdom and he didn't stop until he had climbed the hill and come forth on the third day conquering death, hell, and the grave and whoever calls on his name that Holy Spirit flows from the throne and touches that person and transforms their life. Don't give me your dysfunction. Don't give me your habits. Don't tell me about who abused you. Don't tell me about how tough it's been. Let me tell you about a God that has a river that flows from the throne. Let me tell you about a Holy Spirit that can change you today. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody say amen. Bang your hands together. Glory to God. said they measured a thousand cubits and when the angel or the man of God measured a thousand cubits it was water to the ankles notice the further they go with the measurement the deeper the water gets somebody say amen the Lord spoke to me the last week of December when I was in prayer for this new year and said tell the church the water is going to get deeper in 2013 <laughs> Pastor, what's going to happen economically? I don't know. What's going to happen morally? I don't know. What's going to happen with families and people and situations in America? What's going to happen with Obama? I don't know. What's going to happen in the White House? I don't know. But I know what God's up to. God is going to put the water deeper. Hallelujah. We're not going to less spirit. We're going to more. We're not going to less anointing. We're going to more. We're not going to less Holy Ghost. We're going into more Holy Spirit. The water's getting deeper. Notice in each occasion of three measurements, there was a, a set measurement of a thousand cubits. And I just want you to all understand that the Holy Spirit wants you to know that He is measuring us. And He's measuring our journey. And that we're not on the reincarnation, endless cycle of life that the Hindus and everybody else tries to break and get into the karma of eternal life. You know, it's funny, Americans think reincarnation is cool. They don't realize in India they're trying to break the cycle of reincarnation. Because, you know, in India you come back, if you didn't do good in this life, you get another chance, but you come back as a, uh, you know, if you didn't do very good, you come back as a cow or a chicken, you know, or a crab or a mouse or a flea. But Americans don't want to do that, so they say, oh, I was a general in, a, in the in the Civil War Army back in, the, you know, 1864. No, you weren't. You were a thought in God's mind. It's appointed unto man once to die, and after that, the judgment. There's no coming back. There's no reincarnating. Hello. Amen. I'm telling you that these are lies. These are doctrines of devils that are perpetrated in the world today, and they creep in even into the church. But, you know... They're, we're, on a, we're not on an endless cycle going around in circles with nothingness and meaningless. They asked Mick Jagger, sum up your life in one word, and he said, meaningless. Why? He's on the treadmill going in circles. Ask Doug Chambers, Holy Ghost preacher from Bellflower, what my life is. My life has purpose. I have destiny. I'm on a road going somewhere. And the city of God is at the end of the road. Hallelujah. Or say, don't ask me. 
Nobody asks me where I'm going, but I'm going somewhere. I'm on a journey. I'm on a road, and so are you. And don't you let the devil discourage you on the road. Every day that you live, you stay on the narrow path. You're closer to heaven. You're closer to the reward. Don't you let the devil pull you aside. Don't you let him discourage you. In 2013, make up your mind, I'm going to be victorious. If mama don't want to go, I'm going. If husband doesn't want to go, I'm going. If my kids don't want to go, I'm going. I'm going on with God. I'm going to run on this journey. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap for it. God's measuring. God, God has a measure. And we're on a journey and we're about to get there. Somebody say amen. That's what it says about Abraham. Instead of letting so many years, over 20 years pass and discourage him, he let the 20 years encourage him. Somebody say amen. He said, whoo, must be getting close now. It's been over 25 years. Look at mama, how old she is. Look how deep her wrinkles are. Whoo, we're getting close now. We're going to have a baby because God said we're going to have a baby. Somebody say amen. I'm 100 years old. Don't know how much longer it's going to be, but I know one thing. Every day the sun comes up in the east, I'm closer to my reward. How many of you know God's got you on a timeline and he's got you at a destination and you're going to get there. You're going to see what God promised you. Somebody say amen for this. Hallelujah. We're going somewhere. We're going somewhere. Hallelujah. A thousand cubits, water to the ankles. Amen. It's hot up here. Is it hot down there? Yeah, turn it down to about 66 on both sides. It's too hot. I can tell the saints are looking sleepy. I can tell when it's too hot. We need to cool you off. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. All right. Glory to God. There's two things about these waters. He measured a thousand cubits and it was water to the ankles. To me, this represents salvation. We're in the spirit, but you're in ankle deep. Now, there's only thing you can do in water ankle deep, and that's make it muddy. Somebody say amen. And there's some people, they get in the kingdom, and they don't want to grow. They don't want to go any further. They don't want any more. And there's a lot of skin showing, a lot of flesh. See, what does the devil do? The devil got cursed by God and he said, On your belly you shall crawl and you shall eat dust. And dust is what we're made out of, flesh. So the devil feeds on your flesh. That's why the devil can't go to heaven because when you die, your flesh is going to be in the ground, but your soul is going to be in heaven and the devil will never touch you again. Somebody say amen. You get a new body, a glorified body. Hallelujah. One, the devil can't touch. But as long as you're alive in this flesh, the devil's going to be after your flesh. And there's some people, they get in the kingdom and they're just ankle deep water. They just kick around. Woo, I'm saved. Hallelujah. Look at there. I'm saved. Yeah, you're saved, but you've got a whole lot of flesh showing. You still cuss when you get mad and they cut you off on the freeway. You still gossip and slander. You still... Hello. You still taking a little wine with your meal? Well, it's not drinking if you do it with your meal. Really? You still, you still, you still got a lot of flesh showing. Some of you never grow. You never get any deeper in the spirit. You're battling over the same stuff. You're battling your flesh. Battle your flesh. Battle your flesh. Battle your flesh. But if you keep going, God's got more and it'll take you more. Went from the ankles, amen, and it goes up to the thigh, then it goes to the waist, and then pretty soon it's so deep that you can't even get across and it's waters to swim in. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I went to the Samoan church. party yesterday we had a wonderful time and uh 
I like the Samoan customs at the end where she's up there and they're playing a song and they're all coming up and throwing water, uh, throwing the bills down. I like that. We need to install that custom. <laughs> and they're throwing the money at her feet. And then I didn't understand what happened with one of the cousins or somebody, but he just jumped on his face down at her feet. And she put her foot on his back like that. Now, what did that mean? What did that mean? Throws himself down? Okay. I like that. In an act of movement, he just threw himself down on the carpet. I thought, what happened? And she put her foot on him. I didn't get the meaning of that one there, but that's a good one. Yeah. So she's going to use him. Instead of having to get her feet wet, she's going to step on him and get on across the puddle. Wow. What a hero. Isn't that beautiful? But when I saw that act and I saw what he did, it, it made me think about this message. That that's what God wants. God wants somebody to get so caught up in love with him that they'll just throw themselves out in the deep. They'll quit making excuses for ankle deep and knee deep and, and waist high. And they'll just dive off in the deep end. Somebody say amen. They'll just throw themselves in wild abandonment down at the feet of Jesus and say, Lord, here I am. Here's everything I've got. I give my all to you. Somebody say amen. Man, when that happens, great and mighty things will happen. What happens? First of all, your flesh is all covered under the Holy Spirit. Somebody say amen. Let me tell you something, folks. Living this Bible is impossible without the Holy Spirit. I cannot pick myself up by being good. I cannot reform myself. I must have the Holy Ghost to change my life. I must be submerged in something greater than me. I must be submerged in God Himself. I need God in my eyes. I need God in my head. I need God in my ears. I need God in my tongue. I need God all over me, in my hands, in my heart, in my belly. I need Him in my knees. I need Him in my feet. I need need God all over me. Somebody say amen. And the Holy Spirit is designed to take you places you can't go on your own. Somebody say amen. See, if you get enough of the Holy Spirit, you won't get him. He'll get you. You know, as long as you're down in a river and you, you got your feet on the bottom, it doesn't matter how deep you are, you're still in control. You're telling the river, but boy, when you jump off out in the river, you get caught up in the movement of that water, and now you're going where the river wants to go. Your feet are not touching the bottom. You are caught up in the move of God. Somebody say amen. He said it was a river that I could not cross. I'm telling you, God is going to flow through this house today, and he's going to catch some people in the river, and he's going to transform you. Some of the habits, some of the sins of the flesh you've battled with, they're going to disappear. You're going to change 180 degrees and walk out of here and you are no longer going to have those spirits on you but you are going to be covered by the blood and the Holy Spirit. You're going to be transformed by the power and the presence of God. For Jesus is in this house today and the Holy Spirit is here in a powerful way. We're not depending on ourselves. We're depending on the Holy Ghost to do for us what we cannot do on our own. We are not products of man. We we are products of the Spirit of Almighty God. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. I want you to know the water of the Holy Spirit is rising. It's not getting less. It's getting greater. It's not getting smaller. It's getting to be more. It's going to be unstoppable. God's going to sweep some of you up in his river. And you're going to be completely changed. Somebody say amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap. Hallelujah. 
Man has his best efforts, but man with all of his technology and his efforts can't stop a hurricane. Look at Hurricane Sandy. They knew for four days that that hurricane was coming in. They saw the confluence of the storms, and they called it, you know, a nor'easter that was coming in. They said there's cold from the north, and there's, there's heavy clouds from the south. This is going to be, you know, uh, epic proportions. It was everything that they said. They warned them for days, and yet it did 3.8 billion dollars worth of damage man and all of his technology and all of his power could not stop what God stirred up in a few hours and sent over the east coast through New York City all the subways were, were, were flooded out and millions of people were displaced why? because God can send a hurricane greater than the greatest of man's work God is saying to the world today look out I'm getting ready to come look out judgment is coming but before I send judgment I'm going to send a hurricane of my spirit and hell can't stop it hallelujah no man can stop it it's going to flow and nothing can stop it somebody say amen they couldn't stop Katrina